hey, it's a resident marksman, TJT. And look, we're not going to go into the usual shtick in the intro today because today is going to be uh, not the happiest of occasions of why I'm making this video. Uh, this is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time. This is a, I thought we were done with this topic. Um, apparently we're not. Today we're going to talk about Roman Reigns, but not just Roman Reigns. No, we're not just going to talk about Roman Reigns. We're going to talk about fans. We're going to talk about the audience. We're going to talk about crowds. And this has been something that has been building and building and building for a long time. And I've, no pun intended, wrestled with even making this video for weeks, for months, but you know what? Finally, I'm just I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to lay it all on the line. This is going to be the most shoot shooting range that I've ever done because I've had it. And I've 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 reached my point where I'm just okay, this is it. I'm going. I'm I'm just going to shoot it. So I follow a few wrestling pages on Facebook. One of them is it's still real to us, damn it. And one of them talked about last night's Monday Night Raw. For those who aren't aware, uh, Kevin Owens and Re Roman Reigns face each other in a steel cage match. Roman ultimately won. However you feel about that booking decision, whether or not it was the right decision, I'll talk about that in my SVR podcast. That's for a later time. That's not what we're focusing on here. Anyway, Rusev comes out. Owens and, Ru and Rusev double-team Roman. Rollins makes the save. And so they're asking... Were you happy to see Seth Rollins say Roman Reigns last night? Because de debatably, this is the actual face turn. This is them pulling the trigger on the baby face turn. Was last night him on television saving Roman, even though he did after the show went off the air last week. So people are talking about in the comments uh, him being a face now and what that means. And so logically, yes, they do then talk about Roman and the ever-elusive heel turn that they've been talking about for the good part of two years now, that Roman needs to turn heel, supposedly. That Roman supposedly needs to turn heel. And he's just... Everyone's bagging on Romans, and there's one guy who tries to... who tries to defend him, tries to say that he's a true wrestler. He tries to say that he's a true wrestler. And then this one guy who... I'm not going to show his name... But I'm going to show his comment, and you can see it. And if you're just listening to this podcast, that's fine. That's why I do it the way I do it. It's supposed to be an audio-only podcast, at least for now. I like doing that. I like when people can just, they don't have to look at the screen. They can just listen. So if you can't look it on your screen, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read it verbatim. There are three bullets. He says, let me put three points here. The first bullet. He isn't a true wrestler. He is in WWE because his family. They were wrestlers. Reigns is a failed football player, just like Titus O'Neil or Goldberg. Second bullet. Yes, he can lift a lot of weight, but he is still very limited in the ring. He will improve as much as he wants. Third and last bullet. The titles he won were handed to him, not on screen, but that is one of the main reasons people hate him. And I'm, I'm almost glad that this guy put it just like this, in these three little bullets. Because you know what? I'm going to go through each single one and say why every single one of these are bullshit. Okay? But before I even get into that, I just want to cover the broad topic of crowds of audiences because i'm getting real sick and tired of these of these huge head crowds of these smart crowds or even not even smart crowds because i'm realizing it's not even in smart cities like philadelphia or chicago anymore no 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 last night they were in memphis tennessee and this still happened okay Last night, we had a dead quiet crowd during the first match of the Cruiserweight division back on Raw. Are you kidding me? That is the ultimate sign of a mainstream audience. They just, they don't know. They don't know how to react. This is not a smart audience last night, and this still happened. But I'm going to talk about this new craze in audiences 
where they feel the need to hijack shows. They feel the need to, to be clever and come up with chants or chant random people's names or sing or basically pull focus away from the match. You know, the thing you paid money to see. You didn't pay to see the promos. You didn't pay to see the fireworks and the pyro. You paid to see the match. So what does what does it do when you distract from the match? Now, I'm not talking about just cheering. I'm not talking about just chants. I'm not talking about just booing. I'm talking about hijacking. I'm talking about SummerSlam of this year when you got Finn Balor, Finn frickin' Balor, Prince Devitt going against Seth Rollins, Tyler frickin' Black in what should have been the main event, what was almost the main event of SummerSlam for a brand new world title. And all the audience could do for the first five minutes in what was probably a 20-some minute match so about the first fourth, about the, about the first fourth of this match, all the crowd can do is chant and sing about the stupid title. It's like we get it. You, you get it off your chest right when the match, and then, and then get over it. But it went on and on and on and on. It's like, this is what social media is for. You vent your frustrations there. Don't, don't hijack the match that I want to see. And this is, this is the thing. This is very important to me. This is very personal to me. Because I've never been to a live event. I've never gotten that privilege. That is a privilege to go to a live event. I've had to sit on my couch and watch. I've ha I, ha I just got the network. I've just been able to... Watch pay-per-views. I mean, I can only imagine if I went to a live event and it's my first one. I've been waiting my entire life. I've been a fan basically my whole life, as long as I can remember. But I can only imagine if I went to a live event and it got hijacked the way that match did. And I'm sitting here tr just trying to watch just trying to watch the match. And all these idiots around me keep singing and carrying on about a red belt. When we got two of the most over superstars going head to head for the first time at SummerSlam. Arguably the second biggest show of the year. Yes, it was a weird show. Yes, the crowd was kind of already hostile and tense. Yes, it was in Brooklyn. I don't care. You're here to see wrestling. There's a wrestling match going on. Shut up and watch. And now on to Roman Reigns. Now on to Roman Reigns. I'm going to go beat by beat with this. The first point, he isn't a true wrestler. I'm sorry. What is a true wrestler? What does that mean? And this debate, this little debate has been here for, for years. More, most specifically, whenever John Cena is involved. So I'm going to go to a specific example. John Cena, Daniel Bryan, SummerSlam 2014. There was debate over, okay, what, what's a true wrestler? Hmm? Daniel Bryan called him a parody of a wrestler. But what is a true wrestler? What does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean you had to come up on the indie scene? You had to come up from wrestling in bingo halls, doing your job night in and night out for a hot dog and a handshake, as CM Punk would put it? Why, what, what, does, what does that mean? Why do you have to do that? What does it matter? Doesn't it matter that you're wrestling? Isn't that the thing? Isn't that the operative word in that phrase? Wrestler? If you're wrestling, doesn't that make you a wrestler? Oh, but true wrestler. Okay. So if we're going to go by true wrestler, I guess Brock Lesnar isn't a true wrestler. Hmm? Oh. Oh, no? Oh, but why no? Les oh, of course Lesnar is a, is, a, is a wrestler, but why? Why 
is Re- is Lesnar a wrestler? And I hear people thinking or saying, oh, NCAA, oh, UFC, oh, MMA. But if we're talking about a true wrestler, what does being a true wrestler mean? The, because if that means showing up every week, if that means having a match every week, if that means doing it day in and day out, then Brock, then Brock Lesnar isn't a true wrestler. Then The Rock isn't a true wrestler. Then in the, in the last, last, last part of his career, Ric Flair wasn't a true wrestler. What, what, that means Hulk Hogan in the last part of his career wasn't a true wrestler. Are you serious? <laughs> what, is, what does being a true wrestler mean? Does it mean having a five-star match every single match? Because that's impossible. You can't do that in today's day and age. You can't, you, you can't go out every single time and have a five-star match. It's impossible. And even if it were possible, it's bad business. You can't give away the whole barn every single time. Otherwise, what, what is then special? Why does then SummerSlam mean more than a Raw if every single match is five-star is five star caliber. And even then, we've seen with the women's division that the women can steal the show. The women can have outstanding matches. They stole WrestleMania 32. They had arguably the match of the night at WrestleMania 32. But if you give them a two minute match on Raw, that's not going to happen again. It's, it's not. It's not. So, what makes a true wrestler? Because I, I've seen I've seen this tossed around countless times on the IWC and in the forums and in the Facebook pages and on Twitter. I've seen this phrase kind of thrown about. But nobody has nobody has a definition of what that means. Does it have to be an indie guy? Does it have to be does they have to do they have to wrestle every single week, every single night? Do they have to put on five-star caliber matches? I don't know. I don't know. But it seems to me that it's just a vague term used to put down guys that the IWC doesn't like, which is your John Cena's, which is your Roman Reigns. But now let me move on to something else. Let, let me. Reigns is a failed football player. So? Right. Re- and he's in WWE because of his family. So? I, Re- Reigns is a failed football player just like Titus O'Neil or Goldberg or Lesnar or The Rock. I mean, that, that literally means nothing. That statement has nothing to do with any of this, with wrestling. I mean, I, pfft, all sorts of people did something else before they became wrestlers. All sorts of people. And it's not even just wrestling. You can do something else before you do the thing that you're doing. Now, Kurt Warner, one of the best quarterbacks in NFL, used to bag gro- used to be a grocery bagger at a high V. I that that's one of the most fabled stories in NFL. That that means nothing. He's a failed football player. So what? He has a he has a famous family. So what? So does Tyson Kidd. You don't hate on Tyson Kidd. Oh, but he trained in the heart dungeon. Ooh. Oh. I guess that means that Roman can't I psh, The Anoa tribe they don't have a dungeon. He can't be good. He can't be good. I mean, Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes. Nobody Nobody gets upset. Nobody gets upset that Randy Orton got what he got because he's a third generation superstar. So why do we do it with Roman Reigns? The the Usos didn't get booed because they were they were a part of this great family. Eddie Guerrero, I dare anybody to boo Eddie Guerrero because he came from a from a great wrestling family. That's not why they booed Vicky Guerrero. In fact, during the last part of her run, that's why they cheered her. I, so, 
again, irrelevant. Irrelevant. And if you want to argue that he got everything handed to him because of that family, I'll get to that in the third bullet. But let's move on to the second one. He can lift a lot of weight. He's very limited in the ring. He'll improve as much as he wants. Okay, so first off, he can lift a lot of weight. Again, John Cena, Hulk Hogan, the big... Ch I mean, like, uh, what... Okay, are you mad that he can lift a lot of weight? I, I don't... I don't... I don't... I don't understand. Do you... Would you prefer that he not? I mean, all the wrestlers have to be strong in some way, shape, or form. I don't get why it matters that some are stronger than others. If anything... It's great that some are stronger than others. It makes for d compelling stories. One of the feuds that I want to see so bad is Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns. And I want to see it because it's different. I want to see it because it's unique. Because Sami Zayn isn't the strongest person in the world, but he has a fire. He's, a, he's the scrappy underdog. He's great at what he does. He's a great technical wrestler. And Roman Reigns is strong, but he's also agile. That's not the only thing in his repertoire is his strength. And if you're, again, if you're insinuating that the only reason that he gets what he gets is because he's strong, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Titus O'Neil is also strong. Cesaro is pound for pound one of the strongest members of the roster. He doesn't get things handed to him. And arguably, I'd say Roman Reigns doesn't get things quote-unquote handed to him. But again, I'm saving that for later. He's limited in the ring. He will improve as much as he wants. Is the biggest crock of shit that I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? No. It's not Roman Reigns' decision what he does in the ring. It's management. I mean... Your matches, at least from what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because I do not, I'm not, I don't have a big enough head to assume that I know everything. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but how I've come to understand it is that matches have to be approved by somebody. I, I've heard that it's Michael Hayes, maybe that's changed, or maybe he doesn't do it all the time. But I've heard that people work on matches with somebody. Matches have to be approved. Your moveset has to be approved. There are certain things that you can't do. There are certain things that the front office won't let you do. Okay? I mean, John Cena was made fun of for years for his five moves of doom, but I bet money they kept him doing it because it pops the crowd and it gets the kids to cheer. That wasn't Cena's decision. That was an office decision. That was a management decision. And then when Cena started facing people like Sami Zayn and Neville and all sorts of and Kevin Owens, he was allowed to then widen and expand his moveset. But I mean, it took him doing five moves of doom for so long to now it has bigger impact that Cena hits a Hurricane Rana. Or Cena hits a Springboard Stunner. We don't expect it. And we pop for it. That's called, that's called working a crowd. I mean, this is basic stuff. This is absolutely basic stuff. I, 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 don't, I don't understand. And it's not even like Roman Reigns has that limited a moveset. What? What? Roman Reigns, you don't even need a deep move set all the time. You don't. You don't. And for such a limited move set that Roman Reigns has, he has put on countless great matches recently. He put on a great match last week against Kevin Owens, and he suckered the whole crowd in. He, had, he and Owens had the crowd in the palm of their hands, even though they hated him to begin with. He put on great matches with AJ Styles. Oh, but AJ Styles carried carried him. Again, I so it takes two to tango. Like, not everybody is gonna be a ring general. Not everybody's gonna be. 
And eventually, maybe Roman Reigns will get to that point. But you go shoving your hate down his throat, the second he comes on your screen, the second you hear his music, you start booing him out of the arena, that's not helping. I mean, if he's failing or faltering or doesn't seem all that sure of himself on the microphone or doesn't seem that confident, I tell you what, it's not because of him, it's because of you. Because, honestly, me being a performer, me having done theater for years... I'm an actor. I'm pretty much a professional actor. I know for a fact that if I knew I was going to go out on stage and people were going to boo me, it would affect me. It may not affect me a lot. I may still just love what I'm doing and go, all right, forget it. I, they're going to boo me again. But it's going to affect me somehow. And as... As much as Roman Reigns wants to deny it, as much as Cena wants to deny it, of every now and again, it gets to them. They come out and they don't expect to be booed as much as they do. They hear it and it has to just be frustrating. It has to be so frustrating. Because you know what? Let's not forget that Roman Reigns is a human, a person. He's somebody's son. He's somebody's brother. He's somebody's nephew. He's a father. He's just trying to do his job. He's trying to provide for his family. He's doing what he's told to the best of his ability, and you boo him for it. You boo him for doing literally what every other wrestler does, and that's do what you're told, go out there and do the best you can. And some people have an innate better ability of doing that. Not everybody can be Chris Jericho. Not everybody can be The Rock. Not everybody can be Seth Rollins or Kevin Owens or Finn Balor. Not everybody can be their same type of awesome. I honestly, if the crowd would just get off his back and we could all just move on and the announcers would stop focusing on it and if it could just not be a thing anymore, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying you have to cheer him and you have to go crazy, but if it could just stop shoving booze down his throat, it would make everyone's lives easier. And you know what? I don't mind Roman Reigns. I'm not his biggest fan. There are people that I'm more into Seth Rollins right now, especially now that he's turned face. I've been very vocal about how I can't wait for him to turn face. I mean, the only time I really take that much notice of Roman Reigns is when he gets booed. And when he get and when he does a great match, which is a lot. So, I mean, this is somebody who is literally undeserving of all this hate. He does not deserve any ounce of all the hate that he gets. Because you know what? He's doing a job. He's going out and doing his best. And that's literally no reason to boo him. He's done nothing to you. Oh, he's not the guy we want at the top. Oh, we're tired of him being at the top. Look at him. It, it's hard to put him anywhere else on the card. They're just now putting him in the U.S. title scene because he looks like a main eventer. Why would you then not put him in the main event? Oh, he's not ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Did the building catch fire because he was in the main event? No, it was just fine. Literally the only part that suffered because he was in the main event was all of the audiences booing him. That was the only part that sucked. And the booking. But again, not his fault. Again, not his fault. Oh, we're trying to send a message to Vince McMahon. Again, that's what social media is for. There's a reason you can tweet directly to WWE. There's a reason you can tweet, I'm pretty sure, directly to Vince McMahon. Or to Triple H. Uh, probably the smarter route. Because Triple H is the one that actually gets stuff done. The stuff that you want done. I mean... I just, I just, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And may, 
Probably the most popular reason that people hate him is this third bullet here. The titles he won were handed to him, not on screen, and that's the main reason. The titles were handed to him. Wrestling is scripted. Wrestling is scripted. Okay? Get over it. Get over it. Oh, I don't like what they're doing. Stop watching. Nobody's making you. Nobody's making you watch. And if you buy a ticket to attend live, you pay to attend live. They don't have... WWE does not have to cater to what you want. They, they're they going to do what they think is best. It's not that... They aren't doing anything to spite you personally. They're doing what they want and what they think is best. They're doing... I know it's used as a villain slogan, but they are honestly doing what is best for business. And that can be quote-unquote good or quote-unquote bad. What's best for business was screwing Rollins and Reigns over a few weeks ago and putting the title on Owens. That was best for business. You want to know what was best for business? Bringing the Rock back all the times they brought the Rock back. You want to know what was best for business? The Cruiserweight Classic. You want to know what's best for business? Anything NXT related. It doesn't always have to be... Like, I just read this thing... I think earlier this morning or the or yesterday about how originally the plans for when Rock came back for WrestleMania 29 was not to have him win the title at Royal Rumble, but to have him win the title at Elimination Chamber and have a triple threat with Rock, Cena, and Punk in the main event at WrestleMania 29. That match did not happen. Instead, we got... Punk versus Undertaker and The Rock versus Cena 2 for the title. Am I pissed about that? Hell yes. Absolutely. Was it best for business? I don't know. But they know, they think it was. So I got to live with it. And hindsight's 2020. Maybe you know, maybe we do get a stellar main event and Punk gets what he wants and it still draws great numbers. But maybe you have Sheamus versus Undertaker and that match sucks. So, I I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. Maybe you have Daniel Bryan versus The Undertaker and it's a great match and a great story and you have the triple threat and everyone wins. But you don't know. Just because you watch, just because you've watched for years, doesn't mean that you know what's best. Even the people that fantasy book on YouTube, even the people that go, this is what WWE should have done, everyone has to acknowledge the fact that, hey, this is my opinion. This is my opinion, what I think would have been awesome. But we don't know. Nobody knows. Even the people at WWE don't know. They, they don't. Nobody knew that the Shield was going to be the biggest thing in who knows how long when they first started. They were going to have them come out with riot shields. They had them in freaking black turtlenecks. Nobody knew. But you go with what you think is best at the time. They thought for a long time, hey, let's have them come out with riot shields. All the way up until they were right about to get out, go out and have their... Uh, debut, and Vince at the last second was like, you know, I'll leave the riot shields. Probably the best decision that was ever made. But nobody knew at the, um, nobody knows. And this is the frustrating thing. Right now, they believe, they believe that Roman Reigns is a top tier guy. And I agree with them. Do I think he should be booked better? Yes, obviously, because he has been booked poorly. Raw has had poor writing. But does he deserve to get booed every time he mere shows his face on, on TV? No. No, absolutely not. There are a bunch of people that are miscast. 
I mean, I'm pissed that Sami Zayn doesn't have more to do. A lot of people are. I'm pissed Neville doesn't have more to do. A lot of people are. But do I chant Neville, Neville, Neville during the... Well, I can't because I'm not there. But, I mean, it would be wrong of them to just keep chanting for Neville the whole night. Because you know what? You paid to see the show that WWE is giving you. Whether or not you agree with that show is irrelevant. If you don't like the show, tweet it. Post on Facebook. Post a video on YouTube. Like I do. Like a lot of people do. Will they listen? I don't know. Probably not. Sometimes they do. I mean, you see that clearly they do sometimes listen to us with, with stuff like NXT, stuff like the Cruiserweight Classic. Sometimes we get what we want. You know, arguably we got what we want last year. When a lot of people didn't want Roman Reigns in the main event for some reason... They definitely didn't want to win the Royal Rumble, but hey, we got what we wanted. Seth Rollins cashed in, and it made for a great moment. Made for a great moment. You know how we don't get that moment? Is if they give us what we want a little bit earlier, and they don't have Roman Reigns win the Rumble. And if they had Daniel Bryan win instead, if they have Daniel Bryan win the Royal Rumble, and Seth cashes in in that match, oh, all of a sudden a lot of people are upset. Or maybe they don't have him cash in at all, and we don't get our cash in at WrestleMania. I'm sorry. I mean, I went into that match. I went into that match with everybody hating on the match. Everyone going, oh my god, Roman Reigns going to win. Roman Reigns going to win. Oh my god, it's going to be so awful. I went into that match knowing. Knowing. That, hey, hey, hey guys. We have money in the bank. Seth Rollins. We can have our cash in at WrestleMania. I, I'm not going to complain because I, I trust WWE. I may bitch and moan about it sometimes, just like a lot of us do. There's some genuine, genuine grievances. There's some genuine issues with WWE. And I, I voice them appropriately. I voice them in ways such as this, where maybe they don't hear me. But maybe I find some people that agree with how I feel. Because at the end of the day, WWE is an experience. It's not meant to be exactly what you want. Sometimes you don't know what you want. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't know what you want until somebody puts it in front of your face and you go, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that actually is a lot better. I mean, when I was younger, when I was young, when I was first starting out, I I wasn't a smart fan. I didn't think WWE was real, but I hated the face. I hated the heels and liked the faces. When I was younger, I hated Evolution. I hated Triple H with a passion. Now I'm older, and I love Triple H even when he's a heel. In fact, I appreciate and respect heels. Sometimes you don't know what you want. Sometimes you don't know what is actually good at the time. Taste change, hindsight's 2020. All WWE can do is do what what they think is best at the time. And they think Roman Reigns is best not just because of his family, not just because of his look, not just because of how strong he is, but Yes, those are factors. And I don't see why those are bad factors. He has a great family lineage. They can play off that in storyline, which they have. He has a great look. Why would you not want your main eventer to have a good look? Yes, he's strong. That means he can do a lot of stuff in the ring. He can do that thing where he pick deadlifts a guy like Kevin Owens, clear off the ground and, pow and gives a powerbomb. That's a pop. That, I, that, I'm sorry. I'm never going to not be... I'm never going to not respect that he can do that. You know why? Because I can't. Kevin Owens is damn heavy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. 
Ro- the point is, Roman Reigns has done nothing but try. He's done nothing but try his best. And some people are honestly like, well, his best isn't good enough. And so they should boot him. They should they should pull his push and they should put him in the mid card and have him work his way up. Well, I mean, that's what they're doing now. I don't see why it has to be a punishment, though. Roman Reigns adds to the mid card when he's there because he was in the main event. I. I don't see why him having a good look and being strong and having a family lineage has to damn him. You know who else has all of those things is Randy Orton. Nobody, nobody, nobody bitches and moans about that. And people are still going to say, well, it's because Randy Orton can wrestle. But Roman Reigns has had multiple great matches. And when you have multiple great matches with different opponents, you can't keep saying oh, the other person carried him, and it was all the other person. You then have to admit that there is a pattern. And when Roman Reigns is in a match with a great opponent, boom, it's going to be a great match. That's why a few weeks ago he had a great match with Rusev, and he's probably going to have another great match this Sunday at Clash of Champions. It's probably going to happen. Can it be because both of them are good wrestlers? I and I I I keep I got a feel for WWE at this point because it's also a thing of every time every time WWE tries to fix it the audience is still hating because the audience is go he's terrible on the mic he improves on the mic on the mic well they should take the mic away from him. don't have him talk so much it's ruining his character they take the mic away from him he doesn't talk that much he still gets booed well, he can't wrestle. Gets better in the ring. Still gets booed. But he doesn't have a lot of good matches. Has a lot of good matches. Still gets booed. Well, I... Um... I don't like his gimmick. They tweak his gimmick. Which, yeah, they actually have tweaked his gimmick. He's, he's, it's definitely not the same gimmick as it was during WrestleMania. I it, There was a definite shift in character. Maybe you guys didn't notice it because you were too busy booing. That I noticed it was it was kind of subtle, but they did have a change in character. He was definitely different. I look. I at the end of the day, Roman Reigns can only do what Roman Reigns is allowed to do, and in my opinion, he's he's entertaining. If you actually give him the chance to be entertaining. If you, if you don't try and hijack every one of his segments, maybe he can actually be funny and charming and badass in his own right. And if he can't, it's probably because of WWE writing, which we all know is bad. But you know who suffers? All the wrestlers, not just Roman Reigns. So if you're going to boo, I mean, boo everyone then. Because everyone suffers from good writing unless they're allowed to write their own stuff, which I don't think we want Roman Reigns completely writing his own material. Somebody like Chris Jericho can probably write his own material. That was a great segment that he had last night with his list. He has all these great ideas, but not everybody can be an ideas guy. Again, he can't do what other people have done. He can only do what he can do. And he can only do what he's allowed to do. And it's also frustrating because what's always said, how do you how do you get over? How do you get over in WWE? You ask anybody, any wrestling fan, any wrestler this question, they're always gonna say, Oh, you got you gotta talk you gotta connect with the fans, you gotta talk, you gotta get on the microphone, you gotta get mic time, you gotta get segment time, you gotta, you gotta cut good promo. Well then when you take away his mic time, obviously it's gonna handcuff him. And then the second answer is, oh, you just gotta you gotta go out there and you gotta have good matches. And Roman Reigns does that, but he still gets booed. So it's frustrating. It's frustrating on all sides. And this is what's maddening for somebody like me, who's just trying to enjoy the overall product. 
Do I have opinions? Yes, and I voice them on here. I voice them on Twitter. I voice them on Facebook. Excuse me. But I'm not going to pretend that I have all the answers. At the end of the day, I'm a viewer. I, I pay my money for the network. If I could go to the live events, I would pay my money for the live events, and I would watch because I'm a viewer. I'm a spectator. Can I cheer and boo and chant? Yeah. But once I start hijacking the show, once I start making it about me, it disrespects the wrestlers that are trying to put on a good show. And I don't know why wrestling fans are so split on this. When you see a heckler at a comedy club, everyone kind of universally goes, oh, God, what a dick. But we're different somehow? Now, I mean, yes, we're a live crowd, and it's no fun when the crowd isn't live. Again, I get that. But there's a difference. You have to understand that. You have to understand that there's a difference. I don't care that people cheer Kevin Owens even though he's a heel. You know why? Because Kevin Owens is a great heel. Kevin Owens is a great wrestler. He's going to get cheered. Okay. I even joked, I joked about it when he got the title and he was going to stay heel. I went, good luck to Kevin Owens because they all love him. And the first night, first Raw with him as champion, it was an elephant in the room and he had to address it right then and there. You know, people are going to boo Seth Rollins because they still kind of don't like him from when he was a heel. Maybe because a lot of people are buying into this idea that Seth Rollins is dangerous. And I don't think it is. He, he is. Like, everyone needs to calm down. But, I mean, they're going to have Seth Rollins be a face. And it couldn't come at the worst time because now people have mixed feelings about him. I don't, I don't get upset when people boo Seth Rollins as a face. I don't get upset when people boo Dean Ambrose as a face. I don't get upset when people boo John Cena as a face just because now it's just become this thing. It's happened for years. And I still don't understand. I still don't get it. I used to get it until Cena started actually putting on good matches. Then I stopped. And that's the thing. That's the thing is that you at least have to respect the performer. You at least have to respect the performer because it's not exaggerating when they go, oh, we put our lives in each other's hands every night. It's not exaggerating when they go, you know, our lives are at risk. We risk our lives for your entertainment. They do. It's real easy to botch a move and end up like Tyson Kidd. It's real easy to botch a move and end up like Finn Balor. I So at least respect the wrestler. You can feel however you want to feel about it. I don't care. I don't care. But you have to understand that hijacking shows just because you don't like Roman Reigns for whatever reason. So now any time he comes out for a segment overwhelming amount of booze you don't let him speak it's just tiring and he doesn't deserve it it's the most asinine thing i've ever heard of literally there are no more arguments as to why it's reasonable to hate roman reigns any single argument against roman reigns can be debunked any single one. and now the same is true for john cena the only person that I've seen that actually kind of somewhat deserves their hate is Dean Ambrose. And even then, I'm sure not a lot of it is his fault. People saying he's boring. People saying he does the same things. People saying he's not interesting anymore. The only one that he's responsible for is the not interesting part. And even then, sometimes he's shackled. He's handcuffed due to writing. And the same can be said for Roman Reigns. But, you know, I feel I just feel like everyone picked him. Everyone picked Roman Reigns to hate on. And it's the weirdest thing in the world because this is a guy that works his ass off for, for you. So you can get a good product. He works. 
There are people that don't work. There are people that I don't. I honestly don't think they're going to get better. Like, I honestly don't think Braun Strowman's going to get better. He's never going to be a main event caliber guy, in my opinion. Or I haven't seen anything to suggest that. But you know what? He's big, so he gets a paycheck. And he does. I don't think he really works as hard. Definitely not as hard as Roman Reigns. And this is a guy that routinely has to do publicity. This is a guy that is now at the center of marketing. You think that's easy? You think it's easy being at the center of everything? No. It's hard. It's hard work. And it's a burden. And it's a responsibility. And he does it for you. And you boo him. Anyway, guys, that's my shooting range podcast for today. I'm sorry a lot of it was yelling. <laughs> this is, a, this is a, a topic that has been on my mind for a long, long, long time. And it's a controversial topic. So do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have more to add? Do you take issue with some of the things that I said? Go ahead and comment in the comment section below. Go ahead and tweet me at, uh, at Atamagazi on Twitter. Um, until next time, guys, hopefully the next shooting range is a little bit lighter than this. Um, I'm going to be watching uh, SmackDown tonight. My SmackDown Live podcast should be up. Uh, SmackDown Live. My SmackDown vs. Raw podcast should be up tomorrow. I'll be in hopefully a much better mood than this. But until next time, I'm your resident marksman, your professional psychopath, hashtag future WWE champion, TJT, and I'll talk to you guys soon.